the Apple Store doesn't have bags large enough for this box. So the box comes with a handle. It's so, it's so ergonomic. It's woven. It's, it's a really nice handle. Hey guys, my name is Bob. I'm a software engineer. I build mobile applications and backend services. For the past few months, I've been using Apple Silicon for everything that I do. Building apps, compiling backend services, running unit tests, you name it. And I've done so on two separate devices. I am calibrated now. I've got an M1 Pro with 16 gigs of RAM. This is the base option MacBook Pro. It cost $2,500. But I've also got a fully loaded MacBook Pro with an M1 Max chip and 64 gigs of RAM. This machine absolutely screams. Let me tell you what's so significant about these new chips. That machine right there on paper is not nearly as good as the machine I had before it. I had an Intel i9 with 64 gigs of RAM. On paper, that Intel should be 100 times faster than this machine, and that's just not the case. That machine right there compiles my code base four to five times faster than the Intel version. So I'm calibrated now. I've got an insanely fast machine that I use for a lot of different projects running simultaneously. I've got another machine over here that I use for just developing one application at a time. It does a great job. This machine here is the budget option. This is the cheapest Mac Studio you can absolutely buy for about $2,000. It's got an M1 Max in it, which is 10 cores. It has a 24 core GPU, six, no, 32 gigs of RAM, that's incredible, and 512 gigs of SSD space. And that's not a lot of space, but can we work with it? Can we see how this performs against our calibrated devices? All right, this review is no longer about the Mac Studio, it's about this handle and how amazing it is. I'm going to switch over to using this box. You know what else has a handle now that I'm thinking about it? That's right, Thor's hammer. Like and subscribe if you think I should glue a Thor's hammer handle to this Mac Studio once I get it set up. Okay, let's get into it. This is the base model Mac Studio, the absolute cheapest version you can purchase right at about $2,000. Comes with a 10 core M1 Max, 24 core GPU, 32 gigs of RAM, and only 512 gigs of SSD space. Okay, let's get into it. Gotta get the fancy handle out of the way, apparently. Oh, wow. This is a lot larger than the one that comes with the MacBook Pros. Like, this is at least 40% larger. So that's interesting. Like we've seen with the iMacs, the wings come out. And then, oh man, that is heavy. That is super heavy. And then also bundled up inside is the cord, which is nice. It's got this woven finish on it as well, which we're seeing a lot with like the MagSafe cable that comes with the MacBook Pros, all this like really nice woven feature, which I think is great because the one thing that I would definitely scrutinize about uh, Apple's cables in general is that that white uh, matte finish on them really tends to get dirty over time. I'm hoping that these woven cords hold up a lot more over time. So this is exciting. Let's take this apart. Oh, it's not glued. Interesting. They're usually like glued in some way. This actually could be reassembled if I needed to. So that's awesome. So that's the box. It's super simple. Now to get into the Mac Studio itself. like everything else. It's nice Apple used to use this, um, it's like a, a plastic wrap that would come on these and now you can definitely tell that this is like a composite that seems like it would recycle pretty easily. So that's exciting, exciting to see. Okay, so yeah, like the first thing that I'm definitely gonna notice off the bat, like everyone else has been saying, is that I don't see any ways to take this apart. There's definitely no way to take this apart. <laughs> or may, I, I wonder maybe if we like, went underneath, nope, this does not seem like it comes off at all. Interesting, that's very interesting. Not too terribly clicky, it's kind of like that soft uh, power button like we've seen before. The thing that I was really wondering about, and this is interesting too, the power light, 
Um, so like on older MacBook Pros, you had this battery indicator on the side. You can like hit and it would illuminate how, me how much juice is left in the MacBook Pro. It was always neat because when those lights weren't on, you couldn't, um, you couldn't see them. They were like completely invisible. It's really neat how Apple did that. Well, in this case here with the Mac Studio, it's like a, um, if you've ever seen like a golf ball, how it has like those little uh, dimples all around it. The light for the Mac Studio is just like that. It's got this like little white painted dimple. It is kind of like a dimple, interesting. Okay, yeah, and that's just pretty much about it as far as like the enclosure and whatnot. I think this will make a great Thor's ham with Aldo, honestly. I wanna like take it and glue it on and literally just like set it on my desk like it's a like a Thor's handle. I think that looks that looked super cool. Some other like design ideas too, I think would be funny if like someone like wrapped it in like green and then put those, um, uh, like electrodes for Frankenstein on it to make it like a little Frankenstein machine. I think that'd be kind of cool too. So this is the Mac Studio that I think a lot of people are gonna consider. It's, you know, a, a step up, a huge step up from the M1 Mac Minis. It's got a lot more horsepower, a lot more juice, but it's gonna be whether or not you wanna decide on the storage that you need and all those kinds of things. Because there's a lot you can do with this base unit that you can't do with the M1 Mac Mini. You know, one thing to consider is like, do I wanna go with a laptop or do I wanna go with a desktop? And what's really interesting about this is like, you can save yourself, you know, like a thousand bucks, a little over a thousand dollars and still have as much horsepower as the top of the line MacBook Pro. So that's really cool. I mean, yeah, maybe you're not gonna get 64 gigs of RAM, but what I'm seeing right now, at least in my software development uh, role, is you know that six, 64 gigs is sometimes not necessary. Sometimes 32 is worth stepping down to just to save that extra money. So what I really wanna do over the course of the coming weeks is evaluate how this machine does for software development. So I develop apps. I focus primarily on Android, but I do compile our iOS project every once in a while. Um, I also write backend services as well. They're um, written in Kotlin primarily, which is my favorite programming language. But what I'm getting at here is I've had no problems whatsoever on the top of the line MacBook Pro, and I've also done pretty well on this base model MacBook Pro as well. This one only has the M1 Pro with 16 gigs of RAM, which is like nothing you would think, but it actually does a great job with my giant project. I'm already reading reports that the M1 Ultra is not gonna provide a significant improvement in your daily workflow. A lot of people just will not see the performance gains because of the single threaded performance. Yeah, on paper it is twice as much chip as the M1 Max, but as far as workflows are concerned, you may not actually see much of a difference by switching over to the much more expensive M1 Ultra. Now, of course, if I was gonna be doing insane amounts of video editing, I would want all the GPU cores available. I would obviously consider the M1 Ultra, but for what I've been doing with this YouTube channel and what I'm hearing other people report as well, if you're gonna do 4K editing, the M1 Max is all you need. Okay, so let's, let's just see what happens. Okay, so I've got a really nice power outlet on my desk. If you don't have a power outlet on your desk, you definitely need one. But theoretically, what should happen when I go to plug this in, I should be able to take this CalDigit TS3 and plug it in. So the idea here is this, I've got a CalDigit TS3 Pro, it's got a Thunderbolt 3 connection which lets me just plug one cable into my laptops that gives me access to my keyboard, my mouse, my monitors, my uh, webcam, all that kind of stuff, my speaker, which I absolutely think is like the way to go here. I can leave this device on my desk, plugged in, running in headless mode, so that way I can throw up development tasks to it. I use that docking station cable to plug into the back, and that way I just get access to it. So it's one cable, plug between the laptop, plug between the Mac Studio, and clearly it's working. I love this. So I'm gonna spend the next few days getting this device set up for software development, and I'll start releasing some videos on how it benchmarks when compared to the top of the line MacBook Pro and the absolute base MacBook Pro. 
So make sure that you like and subscribe so that way you can find out whether or not this is actually the device to pick up for everyday software engineering.